My name is uh, my name is Bob Ziskind, and I've asked to be invited to Borough of Manhattan Community College today to discuss with you the very important area of your retirement plan. For most of you who are in the public retirement system, after completing X number of years of service or attaining age 55, you are eligible to retire and receive a retirement allowance. And retirement allowance consists of a pension, which is expressed as a percentage of final salary, an annuity based on your contributions, and an ITHP pension based on the 2% or 2.5% that the city puts into that special ITHP account. If you're members of TIAA, there is no service aspect to your retirement allowance. What you receive is an annuity based on the amount of contributions that have put, been put into your account. And for members of Tier 3 in the public system, for those who joined on or after July 176, you cannot retire before age 62. All right, let me go back for the public system members and, and go over those three items, the pension, the annuity, and the ITHP pension. The pension that you will receive will be the largest portion of your retirement allowance. It's expressed as a percentage of final salary. So if you have 25 years of service in ERS, the pension will be 55% of final salary. If you have 15 years of service in the public system, the pension portion of your allowance will be almost 23%, 22.95. All right, that's one part of your retirement allowance. Now, most people talk of their retirement allowance, they say their pension, but that's incorrect. The pension is one part of it. The second part would be the ITHP pension. That's the 2% or the 2.5% that the city puts into a special ITHP pension account. That comes as an add-on to your retirement allowance. It's at a very small rate of return. It might only add on $80 a thousand, $94 a thousand, depending on your age. But it, it's an add-on that you can't do anything about. The third part of your retirement allowance, the annuity, that's something you can play around with. Because that represents your contributions. What you receive as an annuity is a very poor rate of return. The same $80 a thousand or $100 a thousand, depending on age. But with the annuity money, you can either not put money in, or just before retirement, you can borrow three quarters of it. If you don't put money in or borrow the money, you will receive literally pennies less per dollar. But you either have the dollar that you saved, or you spent the dollar. But the cost to you, or the penalty for doing this, for shorting your account, is minimal difference between, well, let's say someone who is uh, 55, 25 years of service, the difference between not having $10,000 in your annuity account or having $10,000 is $700 a year. If you put in $10,000, you're going to get $700 more than the person who didn't put in the $10,000 who didn't put in the 10,000 either spent it or saved it. If they spent it, all right, the penalty, it's going to cost them seven cents on the dollar. It's a very small penalty. All right, let me stop here because if you don't have this understanding, then we're gonna to have to go back and do it again. Let me get some questions, and particularly around the area of, of annuity contribution. Is anyone paying money into the retirement system? All right, if you are, then go see Gloria Kaplan right after this session today. In other words, if you're paying money into the system, what you might be able to do is either reduce your rate to zero or reduce your rate down to maybe 9% less than you're now paying. Now, this doesn't apply to the TIA people. They must pay 1.5%. Let's say you're in Plan B and you're paying 12.5% to the retirement system. 
plus 6.7 percent Social Security. Now what you can do is you waive the two and the two percent forgiveness. So you revoke that waiver. You then elect to reduce your annuity contribution by the amount of money you must pay for Social Security. That saves you 6.7 percent in addition to the two. And then as a Plan B member, you can take another 1 percent reduction. The effect is you have reduced your 12.5 percent rate by 9.7 percent. That's a big saving. Yes. Wouldn't that also reduce your Social Security at the no, end of the bill? No. You must always pay Social Security. No, the amount to you. It has nothing to do with Social Security. It, it reduces the amount of money you're paying into the retirement system. Instead of paying them 12.7 percent, you're going to pay them 2.8 percent. I'm sorry, instead of paying 12.5, you're going to reduce it by 9.7. You must always pay the 6.7 Social Security. Now, with the money that you don't give to the retirement system, you should be saving that yourself so that you will have that money in retirement invested that will produce more or equal to the penalty that the city charges you for not having that money there. And you have one other thing. You have the principal. You have that money in your pocket. Yes, sir. I'm in Plan A. In other words, you're telling me now that I should change over to Plan B. No. No. <laughs> Never said that. Okay. I mean, and uh, then reduce my annuity? No, no. I was if saying I it. I to change over to Plan B. Well, the only reason you would change over to Plan B and you would do that at retirement is if you didn't meet the qualifications for Plan A retirement. Plan A says you must have at least 20 years in order to retire under Plan A. If you would not have 20 or 25 years by the mandatory retirement age, you should still be in Plan A because Plan A would cost you something like 3.95 percent and reducing it by the Social Security offset, you would pay nothing. If you went into Plan B, first it would be the wrong plan if you're going to make 25 years and it would end up costing you 12.5 percent right off the bat. Yes. You made a reference to a mandatory retirement age. What's the chance of that uh, being eliminated in view of Mr. Cuomo's new recommendations to the state to eliminate age 70 as mandatory retirement in the state? Well, the bill, is, as I saw it in the Times today, was that uh, it would not apply to tenured instructional staff in colleges and universities. So, you know, it, it would have some effect on the university. It would allow us to keep our uh, clerks and untenured people beyond age 70, and tenured faculty members would have to leave today at age 70. Are you talking, I'm talking about civil service employees. That's not tenured instructional staff. Okay. Then, in effect, it would eliminate the mandatory retirement age. The reason I bring that up, I'm newly introduced to your staff here, having just effectively got down your plan probably at the beginning of 1983. Do I have to work here for about 86 years to collect something? <laughs> well, you started, you came into Tier 3. Right. Tier 3 is the worst of the city's three pension plans. Right. Tier 3 says you must have at least 10 years of service exactly. in order to retire, and you cannot collect until age 62. They charge you 3% with no loan capabilities. If you resign or leave before age 62, you have to wait until age 62 to get your money back. They give you 5% interest where they give every the other two tiers 8% interest. It's a horror. But if you came in a clerical title, it was the only game in town. You had no choice. If you came in as a provisional, you did not have to join the pension system. But let's assume you came off a civil service list, you had to join. You're at the mercy of the state legislature. Every year when they meet in Albany, they can change Tier 3. In fact, they changed it last year ago, January. They made it Tier 4. They may change it this year, and it'll Tier 3, which was replaced by Tier 4, will be Tier 5. It's a horror. The only thing Tier 3 allows you to do before age 62 is die. Uh, I've accomplished that 